these super beings would one day soon turn on the creator and relegate him to the status of the greatest failure of all time. I was shocked when I found out who the biggest failure in the Bible actually is. You know, everybody asks, you say, who's the biggest failure? They say, Judas. Somebody else will say, no, I believe it's Adam. Well, how about the devil? <laughs> he's the most consistent failure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but he's not the biggest in terms of material failure and so forth. The biggest one in the whole Bible is God. Mm. <laughs> oh, what, what, what? Don't you turn that set off. <laughs> you listen to it. You, I told you now, you sit still a minute. You know me well enough. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell something that I can't prove with the Bible. You see, long before God had visualized planet Earth into existence, he had also created another world full of beings who were called angels. One of these angels was a being of such breathtaking beauty and brilliance. He was named Lucifer, the morning star. Lucifer had great ambition. He wanted to take control of everything that God had ever created. He wanted to become exactly like the Most High. Lucifer tried to overthrow God with the power of words, but he ended up losing. Because of his treason, Lucifer was cast out of heaven and he was renamed Satan the Deceiver. Tumbling from the mother planet where God lived, Satan landed on the replica that God had spoken into existence. He landed on planet Earth, where Adam and Eve would one day live. There, he lay in wait for the opportunity of the ages, the opportunity to get back at God. And then one day, opportunity came a-knocking. Not long after God had spoken Adam and Eve into existence, Satan spied them standing naked in the middle of the Garden of Eden. He instantly transformed himself into a serpent, and he cunningly tricked the two little gods into committing cosmic treason. For the price of a piece of fruit, Adam and Eve sold their godhood to Satan, and the devil through Adam became the god of this world. Alas, not only did Adam and Eve lose their nature as gods, but they were infused with the very nature of Satan. Adam had become the very first person to be born again. He was born with the nature of God, but born again with the nature of Satan. In one blinding instant, the first man and woman were transformed from divine to demonic. They became susceptible to sin, sickness, suffering, and more importantly, to spiritual death. Eve's body, which was originally designed to give birth out of the side, underwent a radical transformation. From that moment on, she and her female offspring would bring forth children from the lower region of their anatomies. Holy Spirit said something to me, and I had to go like a madman looking in the Word. He says, God's original plan is that the woman was to bring forth children out of her side. What? You know that there's nowhere in the Bible but where God gives birth out of His side? Jesus gave birth to the church out of His side. Adam gave birth to his wife out of His side. It was sin that turned the thing around. And it was sin that transformed her flesh and her body. In that fateful moment, Adam and Eve were barred from Eden and God was banished from the earth. Satan now had legal rights to the earth and all of her inhabitants and God was left on the outside desperately searching for a way to get back in. God, in a flash, had become the greatest failure of all time. Not only had he lost his top-ranking angel, as well as at least a third of his other angels, but now he had also lost the first man and the first woman and the earth and all of its fullness. He lost his top-ranking, most anointed angel, the first man he ever created, the first woman he ever created, the whole earth and all the fullness therein, a third of the angels at least. That's big loss, man. I mean, you figure all that, that's a lot of real estate, brother. Gone down the drain. Now, the reason you don't think of God as a failure is he never said he's a failure. <laughs> no. And you're not a failure till you say you're one. But God was not yet ready to throw in the towel. 
Realizing that he needed man's invitation to get back into the earth, God immediately went back to work. After thousands of years, God finally found a man named Abraham who took the bait and became the vehicle through which God, if he was lucky, might one day win back the world he had lost. Adam, as I said, gave it away to the serpent, to the devil. As a result of it, he got his behind kicked out of the garden. He was out of Eden, out of the garden, and began to wander around. And he has troubles from day one. Now, God was out of the business. God was out of the earth realm. God had no more stock in this earth realm. No more, none at all, nothing he could do. Nothing he could do. Not a thing in the world he could do. The only way God could get back into this earth realm, he had to have an invitation. <laughs> he had to have an invitation. And so God looked around, saw different men, saw Noah, saw a different one. He gave them a few instructions. They did what he said, so and so and so and so. But finally he got to a point where he had his plan ready for an operation. And he saw a man named Abraham. Through Abraham, a second Adam would eventually come, who, if all went according to plan, would return to man his godhood and to God his good earth. Abraham could well have told God to just bug off. Instead, however, he decided to buy into God's deal. God and Abraham became blood brothers. They forged a covenant that would gain Abraham health and wealth and would regain for God a foothold into the world he had created. God's plan was to make Abraham the father of all nations and to produce from his seed another Adam who would regain the turf lost by the first Adam. In keeping with his word, God made Abraham very, very wealthy. Then once again, he proceeded to visualize. Through God's mind raced images of a brand new Adam, a man who would one day restore to him his rightful place in the universe and would forever banish his arch rival Satan from the kingdom. And then it happened. One day, the image of a savior coalesced in God's mind. Without hesitation, God began speaking into existence the picture of a redeemer. He had that picture painted on the very canvas of his consciousness. Excitedly, God positively confessed, the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming. As God's spirit hovered over a woman named Mary, the confession began to take shape before his very eyes. The spoken words became legs, arms, eyes, and hair, and then there emerged the body of a second Adam. The Bible says the prophets came and spoke the word not knowing what they were saying. But 4,000 years passed when the word became a human being and walked and talked and moved. The spoken word became a human being. The spoken word became flesh. The spoken word got legs on, arms, eyes, hair, a body, and he was no longer saying, Thus saith the Lord. He was saying, I say unto you. Amen. The word that was spoken through the lip of prophets was now walking on the seashore of Galilee. The second Adam was named Jesus. As Abraham's descendant, Jesus was wealthy and prosperous. He lived in a big house. Jesus had a nice house, a big house. He handled big money. Jesus was handling big money. He even wore designer clothes. John 19 tells us that Jesus wore designer clothes. <laughs> Uh, well, what else are you going to call it? Now, uh, designer clothes, that's blasphemy. No, that's what we call them today. I mean, you didn't get the stuff he wore off the rack. It wasn't a one-size-fits-all deal. Uh-uh, uh-uh. No. No, this was custom stuff. Jesus was so wealthy that he needed a treasurer to keep track of all of his money. The Bible said that he had a treasurer, a treasury, they called it the bag, that they had one man who was the treasurer named Judas Iscariot, and the rascal was stealing out of the bag for th th three and a half years, and nobody knew that he was stealing. You know why? Because there was so much in it, he couldn't tell, nobody could tell that anything was missing. If he had three oranges in the bottom of the bag and he stole two of them, don't tell me, you wouldn't know that something was missing. <laughs> To receive your copy of the Christianity in Crisis 